Hello everyone and welcome to the Bronchi Boosters Vodcast. It's a series where we invite healthcare specialists to come and talk to us about asthma. We'll discuss topics such as what causes an asthma attack, how to manage an asthma attack, myths and facts about asthma and many more. Asthma is often an underdiagnosed and undertreated public health problem. Learn how to manage your and your children's asthma. On today's show, we chat to Dr. Shana Emanuel. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. Thank allergies you. and asthma, the link between the two. Let's start there. Well, allergies and asthma are um, conditions which are part of an umbrella set of conditions, uh, which we sort of term loosely as atopy. Okay. So for patients of atopic, they mm. may have something like eczema, food allergies, mm. allergic rhinitis, sure. allergic asthma, and all of those allergic conditions fall under that sort of um, term. And there are a genetic and environmental factors that play a role in, uh, in causing patients to express those uh, conditions over, peri over the period of their lives. And so asthma is linked to, as uh, to, to, to allergic rhinitis sure. in that um, it forms part of this atopic set of conditions. Yes. But the, the detail is that um, they're both conditions of inflammation. Okay. So allergic rhinitis is an inflammatory condition of the nose. Right. And asthma is an inflammatory condition of the lungs. Got you. They're very, very similar in that um, the mucous membrane lining the nose and the mucous membrane lining the airways of the bronchioles of the, um, of the um, lungs okay. are made of the same sort of cells. Right. They're, um, I can give you a long name. They're <laughs> <laughs> uh, pseudostratified uh, columnar epithelia. That <laughs> is one heck of a word to study. If we were playing any game that <laughs> needed me to spell it out for anybody, I'm not going to win. But bottom line is they've got goblet cells. Okay. And the goblet cells f that, that form part of this uh, lining produce mucus. Right. So it's a mucus producing membrane okay. that can become swollen. And um, so this is what leads to the symptoms that you have in asthma and yeah. allergic rhinitis. Got you. So because allergic rhinitis is inflammation happening in the nose, you'll have nasal symptoms. So you'll have a runny nose, sure. a blocked nose, sneezing, um, sort of a feeling of congestion. Yes. Um, whereas patients who have asthma, Gotcha. Um, who have also got inflammation of the lining of the airways yes. will have wheezing and yeah. a feeling of shortness of breath and a cough. So the symptoms are different because the organ is different, but actually right. the mucous membrane lining them both is the same. Got you. So there's a very strong link. Yes. And not only is the link physical, but there's also an immunological link. So okay. the immune processes that take place that cause that inflammation. Mm -hmm very similar and so there's a, a physical link in that the airway is one united airway from the tip of the nose all the way down to the bottom of the lungs got you and then also from an immunological point of view that inflammatory process runs along similar lines on yes. in both places now you've described a couple of symptoms that remind me also of a cold yes. uh, and a lot of people will go well those are the same symptoms i have when i have a cold i might not have allergies i might not have asthma but i have a cold so yeah. differentiating between allergies and a cold sometimes beca can become quite tricky. It can, um, from the point of view that the uh, mucous membrane is affected. Mm. But the important thing is that when you have a cold, the thing that's causing the inflammation is a virus. Right. And when you have allergic rhinitis, the thing that's causing the inflammation is an allergen. So typical allergens are things like house dust mite, uh, pollen, Got animal you. dander like cat or dog dander, yes. molds. These are things that typically cause allergic patients to develop um, symptoms. Okay. So the pattern that you will have mm. when you've got allergic rhinitis is very different to the pattern that is produced by a viral infection. Gotcha. The viral infection it tends to be something that lasts between 3 to 10 days. It's quite um, intense mm. and it clears up quite quickly. Yes. Whereas there's a pattern that forms over years yes. in, in a patient who's allergic and very often they can recognize that their, their allergies are now uh, arriving because it's the spring season sure. or if they're allergic to house dust mite it might be because it's winter yeah. they're, they're, they're now suffering and so they can tell the difference because of a pattern. Got the you. other part of it that's really important is that there's a lot of itching with yes. allergic rhinitis. Yes. 
um, so they get um, itchy ears, or, you know, the, the ear canal becomes itchy, the back of the throat becomes scratchy and itchy, the eyes become red and runny and itchy, and so that whole itchy part of it. I'm it, feeling <laughs> itchy just listening to you because that itch that you get in your ear, yeah. oh, you just can't get to. Yeah, no, one of my patients told me he wants a knitting needle. A knitting just getting yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the thing is that itchy part of it is not typical sure. in, a, in a common cold. Okay. And the other thing is, is if the common cold is a little bit more of a serious infection, right. if it's something like influenza, yes. um, you might also get fever and general body aches and mm. pains, quite severe fatigue. Um, you can get mild fatigue with um, allergic rhinitis, particularly mm. if a patient's not sleeping well, right. but it's not the kind of fatigue that you would get with a, a severe viral infection. Sure. So there are definitely differences, mm. but the core um, issue is that the allergic rhinitis process and the common cold process is sure. happening in the mucous membrane. Got and that you. mucous membrane is turning from a nice thin sheet yeah. to a big thick duvet producing mucus. Got you. And in so, so that runny nose aspect of it, that mm. thick blocked up runny aspect of it, that is very similar in both cases. Well, it's strange because, you know, you must get a lot of patients that say every change of season I get a cold, a misdiagnosis of allergies where people go, you know, I've been having this cold I get every year. It's normal. Mm. I always get a cold and they'll tell you what, which time of the year. Yeah. Do you often look and they go, no, you have allergies. Yeah, no, that's a very common, that's a very common problem. But there's another problem that's even more uh, of an issue is that sure. In adults, they tend not to get colds very often. Right. You, they, they, they might get colds maybe once or twice a year. Okay. And at most, they'll get influenza once a year. Sure. Um, but children, particularly children, young children who mm. are at preschool yes. or in playgroups, they tend to get between six and 12 um, mild respiratory tract infections, colds, okay. per year. Yeah. So that could be up to one a month. Now that can be more difficult to tease out sure. because you know they're sitting with two columns of mucus yeah. hanging out of their nose yes. um, for pretty much most of the year and now yeah. you've got to try and work out is this allergy or is this getting a cold over and over again and those are more though those are more difficult to to diagnose but you know there's there's a strong um, genetic component so yes. often you'll find that there'll be you know mum has asthma yes um, and the little baby sister has yes. eczema and this gives you a little bit of a shove in the direction of thinking okay maybe allergic sure and then of course you can do skin prick tests and well, and and see whether or not the child has been sensitized to common error allergens because that would that would be the next question is how as a parent do you deal with it do you go and say well listen this is normal for my child to be ill mm. 12 times or have a runny nose the whole year mm. it's what to expect or do you go well listen as a parent I should be you know there, there is a way to try and get to the root of what's causing that inflammation yeah so I think it's important to to really look at the pattern okay so if you're having a, if your child has a common cold yeah for three days just a, a, a clear runny nose sure feels a bit off, yeah. not eating well, yeah. three days later, right as rain. Okay. That's a common cold. Okay. A child with allergy will not get better so quickly. Right. They will often, and, and the viruses are triggers yes. for allergic rhinitis. So those children who have allergic rhinitis, who are allergic to error allergens, will mm. also respond much more severely to a viral infection. And they okay. tend to be sick for sort of three weeks. Okay. So their gap between their one infection and the next, mm. maybe three or four days before they start again. And so and so that helps a lot. Yes. And then also, you know, other factors like do they mm. also wheeze when they get a cough? Sure. You know, is their family history? Yeah. Um, you know, they just there. There are a lot of questions that you can ask to get a, a, a more general picture to, to get a sense of whether this is an atopic type of individual. Sure. Or if this is just a well child that just gets a cold quite often because they're in an environment where they're exposed to a lot of viruses. Absolutely. Now I want to talk a little bit about asthma, mm -hmm. the symptoms of asthma and when as a parent you kind of realize, listen, I need to take my child for some sort of assessment, yeah. but I have a feeling that they suffer with asthma. So that's a really good question because a lot of young children wheeze when yes. they get a cold Yes. and they don't necessarily have asthma. They have got small airways. Right. And if you uh, make that airway thick on the inside by infecting it with a virus, and then mucus is produced on top of that thick airway, you're going to end up with a musical instrument. Got you. So you, that child will wheeze regardless. So now you have to ask yourself, is this just a well child that wheezes when it gets a cold, mm. or is this wheezy child going to develop asthma, or do they have asthma already? Yes. And that's a, that's a tough uh, diagnosis to make, and sure. it does involve 
um, a careful skill in, 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 mm. in managing the patient because you don't want to over treat children sure. who don't have asthma yes. and you don't want to miss young asthmatics and so I think it's really important to get mm. um, to, to get advice a, about Absolutely. that and see a, a doctor or pediatrician so that you can really get to the bottom of that and I think as a child or as a parent of a child possibly with asthma there's a lot of stigma still attached to asthma and it's one that we, we're trying to dispel and trying to break you know in terms of the other children that don't understand what asthma is uh, if you're in a class where you've got somebody who does have asthma um, you know coming to terms with and as a teacher possibly you and I have had had this conversation before yeah. on a various uh, and another platform about dealing with with a child in your class a child in your family you yourself as an asthma um, sufferer how you kind of uh, you know break that stigma that's attached because unfortunately there is still stigma attached and there is stigma attached to asthma yeah I think the most important aspect of that is education sure and the most important person to educate is the, actually the patient yes and from a very young age yeah. you can educate patients very effectively yeah. um, children can take control of their asthma from preschool age um, they they need to be empowered to manage their condition and they need to understand that as long as their condition is managed yes. they have normal lungs yeah. these are lungs that are just hyper responsive mm. they're not damaged they they only become damaged in the long term if they're not well treated but right. if that inflammatory process is managed on a daily basis they can do exactly what anybody else can do and they can stay managed most of the time yes, yes if they get a viral infection they might have a cough for a little bit longer right but if their condition remains controlled, they can live normal lives and there's not a single thing that they need to um, not do. do. Sure. And I think that's the first step is Got to you. empower the individual. Yes. Then society at large needs a lot of education sure. and that needs to be done through various uh, formats. But within the school system, I think a lot can be done. Yes. I think um, I think that uh, kids at school need a lot of education about asthma. People need to talk about it, sure. so that um, parents and um, children are, are empowered to to yeah. feel confident Absolutely. about managing an asthma attack, about yeah. realizing that children with asthma don't have an acute asthma attack all the time. Sure. And the other thing is teachers need to understand how to manage a child if they're acute and also how to empower children to participate in absolutely everything. Yes. You know, often at school, um, I, I'll speak to children and find that they're not swimming in the summer yeah. season. Yeah. And that's because the teacher's afraid of asthma and hasn't allowed that child to participate yeah. on account of the fact that they don't really want them having an asthma attack on their watch. Yeah. And it's not or, really or the parent that writes a note to say, please, my baby, my precious mm. child, don't let them do this because they, they have asthma. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's, it, it, yeah. am I right in saying that, it, that, that as well? Yeah, and they, you know, and also pa parents don't want their children to have asthma very often because it's sort of seen as a sign of weakness. Um, so there is a definitely a stigma attached. But it, definitely, as a as a medical practitioner, sure. I found, found that if I spend enough time with a, a young person with asthma mm. and really empower them personally, yes. they they tend to manage quite well regardless of how society manages That's them. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, I want to end with this. Um, fact or fiction? Yeah. Doctor, I have grown out of asthma. I am now 25 and yeah. I don't have asthma anymore. I am feeling phenomenal. Um, I stopped using my pump seven years ago. I've grown out of it. Okay, well, that is a, a very common yes. uh, perception. Yes. But asthma is a combination of um, genetic and environmental factors, and right. the genetic predisposition to develop asthma mm. still remains with that patient, even though they're going through a good patch. Got you. So it tends to undulate yes. over a lifetime. Yes. Um, you know, that patient might have had eczema and right. milk allergy in yes. the first year of life develop um, allergic rhinitis, yeah. and then during their junior school years, develop quite severe asthma. Mm. Suddenly they find in puberty their asthma is completely and utterly better yeah. because that change of hormonal milieu in the body's physiology actually changed the inflammatory process in the lungs and their asthma settled. But their asthma hasn't disappeared, it's just quiescent, it's just gone to sleep, yes. but it's still there. And you need to tell this 25 year old to never go anywhere without their reliever pump. Got you. Their reliever pump must stay with them, especially if they have a very active lifestyle, if they're traveling, because you can get caught out unexpectedly sure. just because you've had a, for instance, a drink with a lot of preservatives in it. Um, Give them your example. Yeah. The one that you use, I love it because it's my favorite example because it's so, so true and it, it, it's because it's you don't expect it to happen then. Yeah, so you're 25 years old yeah. 
Um, you've finished your degree. Sure. You've made a little bit of money okay. on your on your uh, uh, yeah. ho summer holiday, and now you're traveling. Yes. You find yourself in Rome, three o'clock in the morning in a taxi after coming back from a club, and you don't, you're not at home. You don't speak the language. Yes. You don't know where the hospitals are. Yeah. You had a drink or two at sure. that bar that you didn't know really, no, really what it was. Sure. Now you're getting tight, and you really are getting very tight and you're recognizing that you're actually needing something yes and uh, you also on top of that become very anxious yes and you're out of your comfort zone and you don't know how to get help if you've got your asthma pump with you that will give you four hours to get to get to where you need to get got you and to communicate what you need to communicate but if you're not carrying that asthma pump you're in trouble you can end up in real trouble absolutely i think that's such a great example yeah and i think that it's a i mean it's a conversation that that needs to be explored in further detail uh, and in a sh certainly in a lot uh, a greater depth as well because i think that just touching on the surface of uh, what is asthma understanding asthma understanding um that it's something that might never go away possibly and something that you're always going to be aware of at the back of your mind and breaking down those social stigmas attached to, to asthma as an ongoing conversation. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your insightful uh, conversation with many parents and teachers and people that are may, maybe only just discovering now for, for, for the first time in their lives that they indeed have been suffering with uh, allergies or asthma-like symptoms, or asthma, not asthma-like symptoms, it's asthma, yeah. um, for, for a large portion of their lives. It's been very uh, um, great talking to you, want to use the word lekker, which is a nice South African word, but uh, very insightful chat. Thanks for your time today. Well, thank you very much for having me. Nice. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. Pop your questions in the comments section below. Also remember to visit bronchiboosters.com to view all the videos, learn more about asthma, play the game, or download the comic book.